Yo, 2.3 was the reason why I finally decided to cop the MPC Live. The reason why, auto sample. Now this gave you the capability to auto sample your VST along with your external synthesizers and any outboard gear you're using. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to auto sample your external synthesizers coming right up. What's up? This is the Kingo Caesar, bringing you unboxings, tech reviews, and tutorials just like this one. So if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and then hit the whoa so your kids think you're cool, just like I think you're cool for hitting the notification bell to let you know when my videos are posting. Without further ado, let's dive into the content. <laughs> okay guys, I'm back. And we're here with the NPC live and I got it standing up on this side just so I can show you guys uh, What's going on? We're in standalone mode right now as you can see um, Now in order to like sample your your scent or your outboard gear This is what you're gonna need you're gonna need your uh, Your cables Another thing you're gonna need is just one MIDI cable. That's all you're gonna need is just one MIDI cable. Okay, so We're just gonna make this quick and sweet. All right, always remember out to in or in to out So that's how you you route your cables all the time So as far as this setup, we're gonna have our MIDI cable which we want because we want the NPC live to trigger the um, The Novations Mini Nova. That's the synthesizer that we're gonna be using for this demonstration. All right, so I got my MIDI cable going out and then I got it going into the input of the MIDI input of the Novations if you can see that all right now we want the sound we want this we want the MPC live to trigger the sound but we want the mini Nova sound to come in to the MPC so back into the MPC so that we can sample it all right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the my the main the main outputs of the uh, Mini Nova and we're gonna bring those to the input of the MPC live right here Now you can see that that I have this in the input now I, I purposely took out or didn't set up uh, the output so I didn't get you guys confused on how to set this up now the next thing you want to do is this is in phono for mine and phono usually deals with these two now if you're sampling like your your, your phone or something like that if you're sampling from uh, turntables this is what you would use but in this case you're using the line input so you want to switch this you want to switch this to line okay so now that we got that done let's go to the next part to set it up it's simple all right you want to go to right here it's it's like a little midi that's the midi channel so you're going to set up a midi channel all right and it's going to say midi one now you also want to make sure that uh that you it, it recognizes the midi that you're that you're in so mine is midi out a all right if i had it in midi midi out b then we would ch we would change that to MIDI out B, but we're in A, so we're gonna keep it right there. All right, and then also the MIDI channel that we have set up is um is important too. You want to make sure that your synthesizer, your outboard gear is set up to MIDI channel one. So for mine, I'll go to menu, I'll hit OK for global, and right now you can see that mine is in MIDI channel one. If it was in any other channel, it would not trigger it. You want to make sure just for basics you want to make sure that this is in one and your in yours is in one all right let's go back here so now you see that that mine is in mini channel one all right so now that we got the uh midi the mini channel set up now once i hit the npc <laughs> once i hit the npc live it is going to trigger the sounds in the um novations mini nova so <laughs>
And I love like dark pads like this in my uh, beat. So this is what we're gonna sample right here. And this uh, this right here is the the uh, oxy string or whatever. So that's what we're gonna uh, that's what we're gonna sample. Now, in order the auto sample is pretty much the same way that you set up the VST, but just with one difference. So we're gonna go over here. We're gonna go to sampler, and then up here at the top, right here, you see the uh, the keys. We're gonna we're gonna uh, click that. Now, right here, you see it's got the track the track name. We're on track one. We got the input. We got input one and two. So this is when the one and two matters. So like if you had like a if you had into like uh if you have multiple inputs, like on the MPC X I believe has multiple inputs, then um you would be able to switch this right here. But since the MPC Live only has two inputs, it's gonna be input one and two. But that's the only time the inputs matter. When you're doing VSTs, that doesn't matter. Okay. Now it recognizes it that it's in the program name is MIDI. So it's the MIDI channel. Same thing, same thing when you go down here. Okay. This is your uh, your octave range right here. So for me, I'm gonna go. I want like a a a, a, a long range. So I'm gonna go down to C zero. C zero, and then I'm gonna go up to to C let me see C six. All right, so that should give me like an extensive uh, octave range. All right, so now, like I talked about in my last video. Uh, this sound doesn't change when I hit it. If I hit it, if I hit it soft, or if I hit it loud, it's not going to change. So we only need one. We only need one layer, and I'm gonna put it, the note stride on three, because three is a good setting. Okay, we only got one layer, because that's all we need. Now this is a pretty long. This is a pad, so I want this to be pretty long. So I'm gonna. Um, bring my um uh, my note link up to 777 okay and then my tail is just gonna have like a one 1000 millisecond like tail all right when i rename my samples i always rename them what the what the plugin is so this is oxy string And then next to it, I always put what type of like instrument it is. So this is a pad. All right. So this is actually string and this is a pad. So when I go to organizing my my uh my samples and my folders, I know what they are. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hit do it down here. All right, now that we got that, we're gonna have it going forward. Because we're not trying to loop this backwards or anything. All the other stuff is basically clicked and, and, and uh, standard. I would just leave all that stuff the same way. All right. Now, as far as this, we're going to make this the current program. So when it's done, it's going um, to make it the current program. Now, this is 417 seconds. So that's pretty, that's, that's, that's a pretty big uh thing so maybe I'm gonna scale back my note link just a little bit so that brought it to 307 seconds you don't want to make these too big the reason why you don't want these to be too big because even though the NPC has RAM and stuff in it it's still not like amazing so if you have if you have too many uh key groups that are real powerful it's going to affect your CP usage and your uh your memory usage which is your RAM so you don't want to you don't want to run into that because it'll cause like the it'll cause it to crash or it'll cause it to um not run properly so you want to be watching out like uh you want to be 
making sure you're you're making these you want to make sure you're not making these these key groups too powerful or too too um memory intensive so you know what i'm saying um this should be good as long as i'm not running like five of these at the same time because i mean the npc still is powerful but i'm just saying just just keep an eye on that so 300 and second 307 seconds now i came back because i noticed that my uh <laughs> that my when i was auto sampling my my um my preset from my mini nova that i did have multiple layer sample or selected so just just make sure that when you're when you're uh auto sampling make sure that you have these clicked off if you don't want multiple samples or multiple layers so now i have one layer okay and we're going to try this again and now we're going to see how long it it, it, it uh it's gonna take see look that's a lot better so 153 seconds I was looking at that like that is just super crazy it shouldn't take that much so just because that fact too I'm also going to take my note stride or my note length back up to 8,000 so that shouldn't have increased it by that much 237 seconds that's pretty good let's go back and do it now, like I said, it's still, you know what I'm saying, 200 and, and whatever seconds is still a uh, couple minutes. So when it's done, I'm going to come back. Now it has finished. And as you can see, it has turned this into a key group. So you can see the keys right there. Um, it says track one. And then it also has the name of our um, the what we named it. Okay, so now that we got our key group set up, the other thing that I like to do is I like to go into menu, and then I like to go into program edit. All right. Now, the way that this is set up, I think it sets it up by uh, by the note range. So it will set it will uh, put a certain amount of notes in one key group. So this is this is not when it when it auto samples. It's just not making one one key group is making like uh like a couple different ones and it's putting them all in there like when you see that you can see the um uh, you can see the the notes changing when i go from from three to two those are those are the note those are the note ranges that are being affected all right so i always have this set to all right here okay and then like you can change the parameters and stuff in here if you want like to make it more sophisticated like i said if you haven't seen my last video um with the vsts i have two channels linked in there so go back to that video and uh check those check those channels out watch the video and then check um uh, out those two channels because they explain like key groups in um uh, great detail how you can customly set these up and make your um key groups even more sophisticated if that's what you want to but you know the auto sample feature is just great on how it does it because it basically does it all for you now as far as the fine tweaks you know what i'm saying that's what those videos are gonna uh shine in but i'm just showing you guys the basics so of what i do so now that i got that set to all i'm gonna go to my filter envelope and you can see up here that this is set to all now my release down here I always change the release that's gonna give you the tail so if you have like a like for me I had a one uh, 1,000 millisecond tail on the end of mine this release is gonna allow me to have that tail and I'm gonna set it to 85 all right and see that now that I set it now that I set it to all now I have them all set up so no matter what note I hit they're all gonna be at 85 and they're gonna have that release they're gonna have that little tail at the end. So that's how you set that up. Now, the last and final step that you guys need to do is you need to go back to your main menu and where you have your, uh, your key group set up, you wanna go over down here to this pencil and you wanna hit that and then you wanna go to save current program. All right, now, since you named it, since you named it in the uh, auto auto sample menu is already going to have like your name set up right there. What you're going to do is you're going to go to wherever you keep your programs. 
I keep mine in here. So now, once I go in there, you see all my key groups that I've already auto sampled. I'm just gonna save this one. And that's it. Now your sample, now your, now your key group is saved. Now if I go back to menu, and I go up here to browse, and I go to my places, and I go on my thing, <laughs> or on my hard drive, where I have it set up, and then I go to my <coughs> programs, now I can see that it's in here. Oxy string pad. And you're all set. Now you've auto sampled your external gear. So now you guys are all set. You've been able to auto sample your outboard synthesizer or whatnot. Now this is this is great, like I said, because now you can create like custom patches or key groups, which are basically your inboard VSTs. Now, like I said in my last video they won't sound exactly like the VSTs that you have on on your um, on your DAW or like your synthesizer like this one sounds real good you know what I'm saying that sounds that sounds like almost almost identical but that just goes that just comes down to the type of gear that you have if you have great sounding VSTs or if you have great synthesizers like this is a great synthesizer you know what I'm saying then you're gonna get real quality sounds okay so with that being said you know just just uh follow these steps and you'll get great sound all right my library is growing i try to auto sample you know what i'm saying uh patches every day i try to i try to auto sample at least one patch a day so my my library is growing before i know this thing is going to be i mean it's already a beast but before you know it i'm just going to have like a plethora of sounds that I can go through at any time. So, like I said, auto sample your stuff. <laughs> and that's what I mean. All right. Okay, guys, I hope you guys like my video on auto sampling. Just a little question of the day for you guys. How is this going to help your NPC flow? I know it helped mine, but let me know in the comment section below if you guys have already been using this or if this is something that you're going to use. And let me know how it affects your NPC workflow. Okay guys, that wraps it up for this video. If you liked it, please remember to smash the like button because that helps YouTube's algorithm like me too. And thank you. Thank you guys for watching and holding it down with me today. You guys have a wonderful and blessed day. Old Caesar out.